to the many complaints from local people about Ginny lives with Eric and Martin and its appearance on the shelves at the Haringey Public Library. This, I will not dignify it with the title of book, Danish pamphlet, is an insult to the ordinary families of Haringey and flies in the face of everything we hold decent in this country. I've been told that a small local bookshop reading matters, so popular amongst local left-wing so-called celebrities, who <laughs> share a poncho and it would appear for crude homosexual propaganda, is funded by our gay council, no less. So where is the grant for my neighbours, independent tobacconists and news agencies, some ten minutes away, who kindly delivered my neighbour's people brain during her recent prolonged convalescence? Ladies and gentlemen, please. He should not be using that gavel. Ladies this isn't and a council meeting. Gentlemen, I'm trying to hear what you have to say so this can inform the council meeting. An emergency council meeting will be held in... On the 24th of May 1988, a small addition to a local government act of 1986 stated that a local authority shall not intentionally promote homosexuality. Yeah, or publish material with the intention of promoting homosexuality. Teaching in any maintained school of the acceptability of homosexuality as a, a pretended, pretended family, family relationship. relationship. Kenneth Baker, the then Home Secretary, explained Section 28. As it became known, was a principled assault to the evils of homosexuality. So at school, I was always the lessee. That is what everyone called me. Teachers knew. My class teacher once said, where's our little Leslie today? And everyone laughed. At careers evening, when I said I wanted to be a nursery nurse, my teacher sort of frowned and said that that probably wouldn't be a good idea. She suggested I join the army. I was stunned. That evening, I went into my bedroom and I thought about killing myself for the first time. My mum came to London and in Maida Vale saw two girls holding hands. She seemed quite thrilled. <gasps> Look, Deb, women's livers. <laughs> when I told her the next day I was a woman's liver, she said it was just a phase. She told me my auntie Kathleen was a woman's liver and she's got six kids. You couldn't have said then, Look, I'm in the wrong body. They would have put me in the loony bin. She's not seen her father for 11 years. The 
grandson, Craig. Council grant funding for the independent bookshop Reading Matters and the recently opened lesbian and gay unit has failed. For the time being, both will remain open. Yeah! It's good, isn't it? This is great, isn't it? on this too, are you? I didn't tell him, Mum. Nobody tells me anything. What's he got? Got? Got! <laughs> He's dying, isn't he? I don't know. No! Well, didn't his lordship tell you. His lordship! Mum! His name's Roberto! He seemed like a nice chap to me. A nice chap? Do you realise I grew up in that house? I had a mum and a dad. It was our house. Our home. Don't you both realise all this, this is so disrespectful to your poor grandmother. Oh, she'll be spinning in her grave. And who is that? I don't know. Where's he? She taking us. And what's the rush? Oh.
Action Group organises the first UK demonstration highlighting the stories of black, lesbian and gay men. The Lesbian and Gay Unit writes to the Boroughs Head Teachers urging them to share positive views of homosexuality with their pupils. Both organisations meet in the unit for a second joint demonstration and discover and interesting differences. Well, I don't think I should be done. I work for the council. <laughs> the community liaison officer got the flu. Well, it's more of a sniffle, actually. And I offered to help out. That's, that's all. I think it's quite terrible. Yes? The whole Section 28 thing. I mean, it's 1987, not 1918. And Thatcher. Thatcher is a monster, really. Don't you think? Well, I... People can't help being gay. They, they don't choose to be gay. So why try to persecute them, isolate, humiliate them? I suppose so. I don't know for sure if I'm gay. No? I think, I think I might be, but I'm so confused. Yes. But I know I must fight it. I know that much. And it has nothing to do with being gay, actually. No. You're probably right. <laughs> they just can't seem to decide how to... Uh... Organized? I know. If you flag up the ignorance and racism, do you flag down the lesbian and gay issues? What do you think? Me? I mean, we're so tired of being insulted and ignored. What do you think as a Harangi black person? Oh, right. Well, as a Harangi black person, <laughs> I think both groups should march together, protest together. I mean, under separate banners, but demonstrate. Solidarity? If only everyone was as sensible as you. I had a terrible day. Oh, oh dear. Uh. Uh, I have a girlfriend. She's really nice, but it's not quite what I expected. No? I mean, she works and everything. She has a career, and I don't. No. She expects me to clean and cook and shop and... Oh dear. <laughs> exactly. Are you? What? I mean, do you have a... Oh, I'm, I'm married. I've been married for 35 years now. Goodness. And she's a wonderful woman. She works part time as a dinner lady. <clears throat> and I do have to say, I must say. She does all the cooking. No, but... not does all the cooking, but. I understand. I must do more. So thank you for flagging that up. <laughs> do you think they sorted things out? Well, it sounds like it. Oh, that would make me so happy. Would it? Of course. I mean, I'm glad that they're going. If I'd have gone in, I'd probably made it worse. Surely not. I love talking to you, Ray. Thank you. Will you go to the march with us? Well, I... That's a shame.
each other, your grandpa and grandma. No one's saying they didn't. She was a good wife to him, you know, and a wonderful mother. And a devoted grandmother. I remember her playing spinning tops with us. Every time it stopped, we'd sing a little song. I remember it. Spinning top, spinning. Where will it stop? Where will it stop? Do you remember, Craig? I don't remember. I don't remember anything about her. They were happy. Couldn't have been that happy. They were devoted to each other. They were the only couple on the road who still held hands in church. Mum! <laughs> and I'm telling you now, if she lived, this wouldn't have happened. All you this, don't know this that. mess, this, these terrible, terrible things. He seemed like a decent type to me, his boyfriend. They were <laughs> devoted to one another. We were a proper, Happy little family. Mum! Proper Sunday dinners, made from scratch. Trips to the butchers every Saturday. None of this frozen malarkey. Mum! <laughs> Walking in the park, feeding the ducks. Right. Helping me with my homework. Baking! I couldn't have asked for a nicer mum or dad. A proper Little family. Perfect. Right. We were perfect. Will you listen to yourself, will you? Doctor, just go on. Um, you can come in if you like. Oh. Oh, can we? Well, thank you. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Mm -hmm. Giving me permission to go and see my own father. My children going to see their very own grandfather. I'm sorry. Don't pay any attention what? to her. Ignore her. Okay? Don't you be so rude. Oh, what are you going to do, Mum? Throw my Lego in the bin? What? Tell me. Why is it like this always? Why does it always have to be like this? Where have you put all her old things? Things? Yeah, all her precious things. Her, her copper lustre, her painting of Gallimont. Yeah, her broken dolls. They're in the attic, Kelly. Uh, boxes and boxes. R Ray took such care, everything was wrapped. Grandad uh, wrote asking you if you wanted anything. He wrote and he wrote. You tore up his letters, Mum, unopened. You threw them in the fire. I know how important things are sometimes. Clutter! Because of the memories. What do you know about the memories that we have? I don't have any memories. I'm stuffing boxes. Clutter in these crap little houses makes me wheeze. Makes me feel claustrophobic. Makes me feel like I cannot breathe. Mum! Oh, I need to tell you something. Something important. Delphi. It's pregnant.
wise thoughts. A Woodbury Arts charity, Wise Thoughts, was established to help address social justice issues. And the needs of hard use LGBT and Black, Asian, and minority ethnic communities. Right. But he just buried his wife of 45 years. His Susan. He's 65. During her illness, her care assistant at home has been Roberto. Ray and Roberto are friends. For the first time in his life, Ray has been drinking. I was a hopeless husband. Of course you were. She always wanted to visit Alaska, Susan. Something about snowy places, winter sports. She's seen a program once with dogs sledging in moonlight and cabins with roaring fires and sleeping with husky. It's good to have dreams, Ray. Someday, I always said. Let's just get a bit more in the back, always someday. You had a lovely weekend in Hastings, she said. I didn't deserve it. Oh, oh, she loved the smokehouses. She told me you bought her the best kippers that weekend she'd ever tasted. What now? What happens now? You have to try to get out of the house, Ray. Over the front door, one step at a time. She's the only person I ever felt comfortable around. Do you know that? You know, I, I think I do. My family humors me. My only daughter despises me. No. I have no friends, really, not of my own. And the church was full today. <laughs> Her friends, not mine. Not mine. Why is she so quiet? You know, always so distant. You have to try to reach out to people, Ray. I love my job. I was a competent council worker. A good civil servant. Retirement brings all sorts of opportunities, you know. Go travel alone. Or sorry. Susan's dead. My Susan is dead. I'll just go to Alaska alone, shall I? She was quite something, your Susan. <laughs> you know, I think she'd say, Ray, go for it. Now, I've never met anyone like you. No? No. I didn't even know men could be nurses. He, truly. I didn't know it was possible for a man to live that kind of, well, to care for me. You know, I saw you the other day washing her hair. I saw you through a crack in the bathroom door. I was so ashamed. I felt like a peeping Tom. She'd been asking me for days. Ray, please. I was too frightened. Maybe she'd fall, maybe I'd scold her. In 45 years, I've never washed my wife's hair once. And you, a stranger almost, are so kind, and so tender. Thank you. Thank you. Sir 
service was lovely, thank you. Though I'd have preferred roses instead of lilies on the coffin. And that priest, he had no, uh, no, um... Charisma? Well, I was going to say balls, but they have not cut off, don't they? Well... I'm joking, really. You look terrible. Drunk isn't good on you. Grow your hair a bit. And that shirt's too casual. It doesn't go with a silk toy. And you have a thread hanging down the back of your suit. It took all of me willpower to stop me from coming back down and cutting it off. Don't cry, pet. I'm sorry. You're all sorry. For the past year, the constant washing and the bed changing, the cleaning and cooking and all that shopping. It's over now. Yes. I'm sorry. What for? For coming home every night for your dinner? For always being that soft, warm lump in the bed? For never once raising your voice to me, let alone your hand? Oh, for putting up with me boot clubs and me Irish dancing? For taking me for lovely dinners on me birthday? And for buying me that 60% cashmere camel coat for no reason at all, except you never wanted me to be cold? Tolerating my ignorant mother and cruel father. You have nothing to be sorry for, Raymond. Nothing. But I... it, it was what it was. It suited me. I wouldn't have had it any other way. And there wasn't a single night in 45 years that you, before turning out the light, you didn't lean over and kiss me softly and gently on the cheek. Was there now? No. Well, then. Now. Follow your heart, dearest. But... You only live once. Well, do you? Well, I'm not 100% sure. I mean, I haven't been dead that long, but... What about Kelly? Stop worrying about what people think. Well, the church. Uh, if you're fretting about God and the like, there's no need. Because there isn't one. A God? No. Oh, you better be going. Where? <laughs> A mix of the future and the past. It smells of snow and pine needles and all oh, there are people playing ice hockey, so I'm reassured it's not hell at least. <laughs> Follow your heart, dearest. Goodbye. We'll never meet again. I loved you, but I've got to go. Kiss Roberto for me.
of our own sweet The UK Adoption and Children Act allows same-sex couples to adopt. Roberto organises a romantic anniversary celebration. He asks Ray something, something important. No. Okay. You haven't let me finish. It's everything to your satisfaction, sir. Thank you. I am 68 years old. I've always wanted a family. I've been a useless father. There are so many children out there in god-awful homes. We have so much to give them, you and I. So much love to give. I have only learned how to love you. Please, isn't that enough? Please. I didn't know it was possible for me to feel this happy and loved and accepted and well normal. I waited, Ray. I've been patient. I am 48 years old. I'm too old to adopt a kid. It wouldn't be fair on the child. What is it? Hmm. Uh, Stephen. Uh, Stephen Henlow. Well, he, he's really not feeling well. His wife is asking for me. Right then, well, you must go. You must. Happy second anniversary, darling. No, I'll, I'll stay here. And think about it. I mean, we don't have to adopt, we can foster. Kid needs emergency care, uh, parental respite, care. No, no, no. Kelly, his daughter. But in this scene, younger. Something happened tonight, something important. And tonight, this night, she has come looking for her father. Oh, sorry. <gasps> Kelly! Hello, Dad. What, what? You weren't at home, neither of you. But I... I we used to come here when I was a kid. Do you remember? Of course. <laughs> Pally Pally. <laughs> We used to come here. Oh, it's, it's our um, <clears throat> second anniversary together. Right. <laughs> Look, I, I'm so sorry about the... About uh, the divorce. You can say it, you know. There are worse things than that. And don't be sorry. Be happy. We were married for ten years and I hated every single day of nine of them. <laughs> You'd understand that. No, not at all. He wasn't good enough for you. At least he gave me Delphi. Yes, and Craig. I didn't bring them round because... It's, it's, it's okay. Look, you don't have to explain anything. Well, wh why did you come? Sorry? Tonight? Why tonight? Why are you here? Something happened. To Delphi? To, to no, the kids? no. Mum! You used to bring us here when I was a kid and Mum went to see Granny, remember? Of course. I never understood why Granny wouldn't see you or us. And your mother was always... Always torn. So torn. Of course, I understood finally. Granny didn't want her daughter married to a gentleman of colour. 
She wasn't altogether a bad woman, your grandma. Well, I wouldn't know, no. would I? Just a woman of her time. And you know, I loved your mother. Did you? Yes. It just, it was never right. And it's right now, is it? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Then that's all right then, isn't it? As long as it's all right for you, Dad. Kelly, will I see you again soon, please? Oh, don't hold your breath. you anticipate? Um, uh, sorry, <laughs> we anticipate sharing. We hope to... Uh, well, as I understood it, you work full-time, Mr... Uh, um, uh, I am planning on cutting my working week. I... Right, well, what experience do you have working with young children? I was a children's nurse in Italy for right. a couple... Uh, what about you, sir? Hello? Hello, Great. can you hear me? I have no experience. Great! He's a father and a grandfather. Fostering at your age. Do you think you'll have the energy to meet the needs of an active young person? He's very fit and he's Well, healthy. with all due respect, sir, I was talking to the fella here. We think our temperament and life experience makes us especially suited to older children. Oh, so I see. So if yeah. you were interested in fostering uh, young children, you're not going to get to choose the age range that are. No, of course not. So what I need to know, sir, is what special skill do you have that qualifies you for such an important role? I've reached the point or the place in my life where I'd like to give something back. Give something good back. Really, well, I'm honest with you. Find the ballads, everybody. Find the ballads. So, 
Not so like dear Miss Richards after all. The day section 28 was repealed, I was on a date. On the Wobbly Bridge, sorry, the Millennium Bridge. With Sam, who's a man by the way. I told him I was bi, bisexual, and he looked really pleased and asked if I was currently dating. Wink, wink. So, in honour of by a, by a bagel day, I invented that up by the way, I'd like to clear a few things up. Identifying as a bisexual woman isn't a prelude to getting the D. It's not a performative gesture that I use to excite men. Do not assume I want to have a threesome, a foursome, or moresome. But when I heard that word bisexual for the first time, it made me feel powerful and present. That word is a building block of my identity. On the day that section 28 was repealed, I was staring down the throat of an eight-year-old with an impacted lower three molar. Try being a Jewish intersex dentist in the 80s. That'll get your head spinning. I was raised female, but that doesn't exactly match who I am. You see, I'm not only half of myself. Can you imagine trying to explain that to a rabbi? I like girls, so I was going lesbian. A label I grew accustomed to using, but still, that's not me. Imagine trying to date someone that doesn't want to be with all of you. Tricky, huh? When I moved to the UK to become a dentist, I secretly hoped this would be the place where I could come out. And little by little, this became true. I found a community, support. Then came section 28, trapped again. Not that I had intentions to reveal my gender as were. But what would be so bad about that? When section 28 was repealed, I went from staring down the throat of an eight-year-old to looking up into the light. The day section 28 was repealed, I was standing in front of Eleanor's, my ex-girlfriend Eleanor's flat, waiting for a taxi to take me to Trafalgar Square so I can just sit on a lion and sing one of my favorite Victorian songs. Ash, they'll tell us. Lupitas for the show, Lupitas for the show, Pomodoro for the show, which means that I've painted my lips in tomato sauce for you. <laughs> That's what we're doing, I think. But now I know that I will never, ever clean, shop, or cook again. That would be my section 29. Legislation which allowed same sex couples to marry in England and Wales was passed by the UK Parliament in July 2013. And came into force on March the 13th, 2014. With the first same-sex marriage taking place on 29th of March, 2014. Flowers are falling from the sky. Raindrops are growing out of mine. It is near, there in the distance, upon the horizon. I hear them calling, shouts of cheer, it is near. Would you marry me, Raymond? I love you with all my heart, and I will live with you forever. Good night. I saw my father before tonight when I saw him in his bed, sick, silent, old, was at the Ali Pali all those years ago. I'm a nurse. I won't tell you the name of what describes what I do because I can't say it myself. But I work 
in a ward that looks after ladies who've experienced complications after birth. I'm a senior nurse in sister. I've learned to deal with managing expectations that go wrong, shocks, great disappointment. Sometimes babies are born premature, sometimes with life-threatening diseases, sometimes stillborn. And all of these are terrible, truly, truly terrible. On that night that I saw my father at Ali Pali, earlier, Martha had come home with me. She'd lost her door key and she was waiting for her husband to get home from work to let her in. Martha was a few years younger than me and she was new to nursing and she always looked up to me. I knew I liked her. I'd always known. I'd known for 20 years, but I'd never really acknowledged it to myself. And perhaps I didn't recognise what I was. Anyway, that night she came back with me and her husband had been delayed at work. So I put one of those celebratory dinners in the oven. <laughs> Don't know why I did that with mussels in cream sauce and we drank two bottles of dry white wine and we talked and we talked oh i was always professional sometimes i was a bit detached or even cold but we talked and talked and then all of a sudden i started to cry Martha didn't say it. She just took the napkin and wiped the tears. And then she put her hand over mine. And I can honestly say, in the whole of my life, I have never felt a touch like that before. I leant over. And I kissed her. And it was a long, hard, loving kiss. And I looked up, and there was Delphi in her pajamas in the doorway, staring. Of course, no one listens to me, not in our family never has. My opinions, what I happen to think about things, have never been of any importance to anyone. But of course, I'm the man of the house, according to Mum. <laughs> Craig! The bathroom light's gone again. Craig, the garden gate's come off its hinges. Craig! Open this jar of pickled onions. I tried to fix the kettle once. I electrocuted myself. <laughs> I put up a pergolia in the back garden. It blew over. It nearly killed the dog. <laughs> I'm not handy, right? I am not good with my hands. <laughs> Don't have green fingers. I'm terrible at sport. Don't like beer. Don't like football. But I also do not like musicals. I am not gay. I'm not. But sometimes, maybe, I think it might be a bit easier if I was gay. I care. I care about my family. I care about gay rights. My weird, stunted little family with a gay black grandfather whom I never knew existed, whom I never met. My weird, stunted family. Hello, little one. I don't envy you, really, being born into this. Your grandmother hasn't spoken to her father in years, hates his partner, 
Only ever speaks to her son if she needs shells putting up. And hasn't kissed or touched me since. God knows when. Perhaps never. Doesn't look promising, does it? Well, does it? Family. When I went to live with Robin Ray, I was eight years old. I remember thinking Ray must be Rob's dad. In fact, I thought there were a couple of tickets for him. <laughs> Didn't know why I was there. When I went to live with Robin Ray, it was the best day of my life. I've come from a family where we When I went to live with Rob and Ray, I wouldn't speak. I mean, I could speak. I chose not to. They used to call when it I went to live with Ray and Rob, my grandma was, was really ill. ill. When I went to live with Ray and Rob, my mom was in too much pain to care for me. I was scared that they wouldn't help me see kind of But every day after school, they just broke it. I wasn't looking for love. When I started caring for Susan, I noticed Ray, of course, was a good-looking man, only human. Anyway, he and Susan had been married for many years. She loved him to bits, she said. Susan was a lovely lady. I was washing her hair one time and singing softly, but she asked me what it was. It's cold, like a jelly da manina from the opera La Bohème by Puccini. Oh, she liked that. Said, us Italians are so romantic. <laughs> One day, close to the end, <coughs> Ray opened the door in such a state, breathless and babbling, I thought something was wrong. He took me by the arm and led me into the living room. Music was playing on the stereo. And I recognized it was Puccini. He gave me the album cover he was holding. He was learning Italian. For a moment, we just stood there in that little room filled with this very big music. And that's when I knew, I knew I could love him. Because she 
she is Delphi, and whose heart is secretly breaking. Then. <gasps> You're cooler, darling. And your eyes are clearer. Ray. Look, everyone. Ray, my, my grandson, Ray. Yes, and Delphi. All your family. Where, where's Delphi? Is she all right? The baby? Granddad, I'm fine. The, the baby's fine. You told him? Yes, Mum, I did. I told my granddad that I'm pregnant. Will really you hear? No, she can't be. Where, where, where is she? I must be. I am so, so sorry for all these wasted, endless, tormented years. Rob kept insisting I keep writing, keep phoning to ambush you. I waited one evening. I waited for you to come out of work. I waited for hours. But when I finally saw you, I was too scared. You are scary, Mum. <laughs> I watched you cross the road, get on the bus, gone forever. How could I let that moment pass? And how difficult it must have been for you, who loved her mother so dearly, to have a father like me, always washed, washed in and silenced away, without words, a shadow of a father. No. no. You see, <coughs> I've been pretending to be somebody who I wasn't. Until I met Rob, I was living a lie. I was so ashamed, so ashamed to be who I really was. Believing I was unworthy of your love. My beautiful wife and my beautiful, beautiful daughter. Can you, can you forgive me? Mum, it's all right. It's fine to be who you are. I know. I know. And it made me love you more, not less. You love me? Yes. Yeah. is gone now. And look, we have a future. Look what I found. <laughs> oh! Where's the 
a stranger. But I recognise your family, your friends. I know your neighbours. I know you. I've looked into your eyes and understand your history. I've come from far away, further away than you can imagine. I've travelled through space, perhaps. Certainly, through time, that is a given. So when I talk to you about the future, you be wise to listen. Look around. You think you see empty seats. I see the original mustachios, frock coated haughties, top hats and silver griffin heavy canes, where they're sometimes silent. Silent, <coughs> trembling, laced up, bottom butte wives, glitter eyes. I see the gads and the dandies, the flippity jackets and the flappers, young ladies full of yearnings and hope. I see the sawdust grounding, iron booted now for the factories. Do you think they didn't have their secrets in the boudoirs, the parlours, the milliners, the cobbled giddles, the late night moonlit harbours? And some of them, make no mistakes, built our iron empire on love on a leash. And love sense this anyway. I mean, let's face it, it's pretty random. We fall because we sit next to each other at school or the hair smells of strawberries. Or you, tell me. Let's celebrate love's nonsense. And in our future, love whoever we want for all the silly reasons that has nothing to do with what dangles between our legs or bounces on our chest. Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, I now introduce you to three queer possibilities. Who are first met, Albie? On April 9th, 2019, at a gig in the Blue Yard in Woodbridge. He sang his own song, Praise the Old World, and he cracked jokes. Hey, there was this man who got arrested in the supermarket for stealing. He was taken to court, and he stood at the top, and the judge said, You've been brought here with a charge of stealing a tin of peaches in the supermarket. How do you plead? He said, I plead guilty, Your Honor. And the judge said, How many pages were there in the can? And he said, Your Honor, there were six pages in the can. And the judge said, Okay, I'm going to sentence you to six days in jail, one day for each day, each page that was in the can. Just then, a voice from the back of the court shouted, Your Honor, can I say something? And the judge said, Who are you? Your Honor, I'm his wife. And the judge said, go ahead, what have you got to say? And the voice said, Your Honor, he also stole the tin of peas. <laughs> <laughs> After the slow dips joined back, we soon became firm favourites on the small alternative club scene as Albi and Vulcan, the fire woman. She swallows fire and farts her. <laughs> Excuse the small vulgarity. We married in 2027, despite our being not so much fatty for the other team as being first out, clock holder, and team captain. In 2035, Albie struck lucky when Crazy Old World was adopted as the number two campaign song for the Venezuelan Revolutionary <coughs> People's Party. Yeah. 
insurance with a quick foamy spurt for Mester at the end of the evening should the worst occur. It's perfect. Just perfect. On the night of April the 9th, 2019, I was cleaning at the West London Aquarium. I was wiping down the educational laminates explaining the evolutionary patterns of the oscillation fish and frog. I love fish and have done all my life. My husband, Piotr, hated my job at the aquarium. He wrote to his close friend and manager, Mr. Rav Standish, recommending my dismissal. Fortunately, Mr. Standish suffered a fatal heart seizure that very evening. Piotr choked on a fishbone, and after three agonizing hours on a trolley at St. Leonard's General, where he coughed it up, packed his bags, and returned to Krakow. <laughs> Fish are interesting workmates. You quickly establish your favorites. Gupo, as I call her, is mine. She exists entirely alone, barely moving, it seems. Rebelling, amorous advances, no matter how determined. The aquarium is my cathedra. <laughs> At night, when all the goblin two legged creatures have gone home, Gupo and I commune. We are both manless, womanless, childless, godless, but not friendless. Silent, <laughs> apart from the old flash of vision, and solitary. The future for me is blissful. On the 9th of April 2019, my business, Erin Hood, based in the historic Alexander Park and offering basket balloon rides to good people of North London, went into, was forced into, voluntary liquidation. My good and trusty partners, Edward and Edwina, were naturally distraught. The clouds were our natural home. And the thought, the notion that we would never, ever, ever again together rise and fall with the thermals. That is, the upward current of the warm air, you know, not the freezing of the <laughs> Distressed us greatly. I'd met Edwina in my previous incarnation of the BBC Weather Girl. Edwina was a makeup artist then, and she transformed me from a shy blonde into a something of a siren. <laughs> Edward was a voice coach at that time, recommended by dear Auntie Beebe, and he transformed my grating Essex vow, and I became a nation's sweetheart. <laughs> it was through their efforts that I became acquainted with, and oh so very, very close, to a very significant member of the royal family indeed. <laughs> I wish not to enlarge here on the exact reason for my business failure, but if I mention gin, roast duck canopies, <laughs> rogue drone, and the aforementioned esteemed royal gentleman, you will naturally remember the historically changing circumstances to which I refer. <laughs> Prince Charles fell out of the balloon basket. But that is history now, tell me history. And the future beckons, here on terra firma. One notion fails, we invent another. Bigger, better, stranger. into a 
Today, I went out as myself, and as much as I'd like to say it's the most terrifying thing in the world, it isn't the thing that scares me at the most. Sometimes, I'm happy that I don't pass with makeup on my face or with a skirt on my legs, because where I get called a slut for looking like a woman, they'd kill me if they knew I was a man in heels. <laughs> when I came out to my mum as a trans man, she told me she was surprised because I was so feminine. Then when she asked if that meant I wouldn't wear dresses anymore, I said, no, no, I'll wear what I want. I won't change how I look to pass as a man. Spoiler alert. I lied, because as much as I loved my bright coloured shirts and my lacy tops, they slowly left my wardrobe as it got filled with dull suits, black shirts and flat sneakers. Then, when I went on the testosterone, that was it. Finally, when anybody looked at me, they saw a man. And I, I was happy with that, yet every single item in my wardrobe simply made me want to cry. I looked at every feminine cis man out there and I thought, how lucky you are. Everyone around me was obsessed with passing. The trans community is filled with advice about it. How you should walk, how you should talk, what you should wear. Now, I'd never really paid that much attention to it, but now, well, I could give you loads of tips. One day, two of my trans friends were talking about how the way you walk can influence how people perceive your gender. Well, I'd never thought about that before, and it, it really affected me. Suddenly, I was aware of every movement I made. And now that I have the knowledge, well, I had to use it. Otherwise, what would people think? So you see, the truth is, I don't want my shoulders to slump when I walk. And I don't want to feel my weight on both my feet when I stand. Now, I don't think that that makes me a woman. I think it makes me someone who wants to stand tall and who doesn't want to stop shifting their weight from one foot to another.
into politics proper, not so much protests, no, pamphlets, <laughs> knocking on little doors, calling enthusiastically through letterboxes. Public speaking, in parks, in pubs, interviews, on Radio London on a Sunday morning, hung over in a pullover. You see, when I'm out, fuck, listen, nobody thinks that I'm talking piffle. I get wheels, a haircut, and a brand new whistle. I'm talking Hugo Boss, I'm talking Hugo Boss. To where when I'm not kipping with the homeless, you see, or making useless documentaries yawn, yawn for the BBC. I will believe in stuff and I will save the world from, from plastic greenhouse gases and billionaire tyrants with dodgy comb-overs. Cause in 2019, right, Birmingham, UK, a posse of parents' right want to stop little kids from learning about how LGBT people love. They want to shove them back in the closet. Because in 2019 in Pasadena, Texas, a trans woman badly lacerated her hands when a razor blade was planted in a bar of soap during an LGBTQ event. Because in 2019, all over Russia, Gay people are forced from their homes, persecuted, imprisoned, or forced to work in camps for decades. Because in Turkey, in 2019, a gay man in government custody was castrated. Because in Saudi Arabia, gay men and women are routinely lashed. Because in parts of Nigeria, gay men and women are killed and their bodies burned. Because in 2019, the Sultan of Brunei is authorizing the stoning to death of gay men. One day, I will marry, and it might, just might, have nothing to do with what sex they are. Kelly Marie Harrison. I'm 50 years old and I stand here tonight on the stage of the Alexandra Palace to tell everyone I am a gay woman. I am a newly out gay woman and I am not ashamed. I look forward to smiling more at my patients, listening to my son, and encouraging him with his political ambitions, God help us, <laughs> and hugging my son and daughter and father, and perhaps my father's partner, but don't hold your breath, <laughs> and my daughter's baby. It is all baby steps for each and every one of us. Speak for yourself. I'll take a lot of pills. It's like sleeping with a beanbag. <laughs> we are preparing for the future. Sunday dinners. Can I cook? No. Not even my special tiramisu? No. What about my from scratch pesto dobles stuffed with a whole garlic clove? Actually, no. <laughs> Regular Sunday dinners with Kelly and Craig and Delphi and the baby when it comes and any one of our foster children. Karen, who runs a daycare centre. Jeffrey, who brings his two-year-old puppy. We are planning a trip to Tobago. Como? Tobago first. Why? 
Because I'm 85 years old, my love, and near the end of my own little rainbow. Flowers are falling from the sky. Raindrops are growing out of mine. It is near, there in the distance. Upon the horizon, I hear them calling, shouts of cheer, it is near. That is so lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Sometimes I sing songs. I was wondering, what do you do? Do? Yeah, your job. Well, I'm an air ambulance paramedic. Oh. So you rescue people? Yes. Actually, that's what I do. You're one of Grandad's foster children, are you? Me? No. I'm sorry, but who exactly are you? Yeah. Who are you? Yes, who exactly are you? Don't you recognise me? But it's funny you should say that, because from the moment I saw you, I did think there was something very familiar about you. There should be. You see, yes, I'm your child. So breathe in. So breathe in. Some mind sailing, they couldn't see. But could this be their time to be free? It is near. We bow, we will bow. Hearts ablaze, we have the same souls. It is near. We have the same. So, same song. 